Good morning, die harders. Who's ready to live free or die hard? Not in this case, though, man. Like, the stuff that the zombies and shit, I mean, they die. Some of them die oh, gruesomely, but it's like, hmm. Anyway, as a player, you can tell in my lackluster intro. Um, actually, no, that doesn't mean shit. You know, you can discard that, but ugh, fuck that. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking to you today about Resident Evil Raccoon City. Hey, wait a minute, that ain't it. I'm talking about Resident Evil. Welcome to Raccoon City. There's like that song from, I think, ACDC or Metallica. Yeah, it's Metallica. They're like, welcome to the family. You know, weirdly enough, this book I'm working on was originally supposed to be called Welcome to the Family. But then I'm like, wait a minute, is there a song called? Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Keep a lookout, people. I'm going to be finished with that shit by the end of this year. Check for it on, I don't know, I want to say look for it in bookstores. But, you know, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Anyway. So, yeah. Welcome to Raccoon City. Um, the, It rains a lot in this movie. It rains a lot. Um, This is the non-spoiler review. The spoiler review is coming after this. It rains a bunch in this movie. Uh, the characters sort of just converge. All just happen to converge on this day of all days. You know, just there is that coincidence level. It is pretty. It's faithful to the to the first two games, and I re, I didn't realize that I was like halfway through that it was adapting the first two games because. You get the the cops, you know, like you get Wesker, uh, the stars team going to the mansion, you know, you know you get that, and, you, and but you also get uh, Jill Valentine. <laughs> you also get Jill Valentine and um and uh, what's his name? Yeah, it's Jill Valentine. In this movie, there's Jill Valentine, Leon S. Kennedy, Chris Redfield. Okay, you get Jill Valentine, Leon, you know, Chris Redfield and them in the you know, the station. All the shit goes down. It's from Resi 2. I, I, I'm a fan of the Resident Evil franchise. Really, man. I liked Resident Evil 7. I've heard nothing but good things about Resident Evil 4. I saw what happened to Resident Evil 6. And I'm like, <laughs> Chris! <laughs> But it's sweet. But the dude was that really five? I think that was five. <laughs> but I, I'm just saying, man. I can't wait for the scene where where <laughs> where we see fucking Robbie Amell trying to punch <laughs> like just, just Robbie Amell trying to rock my boy his way past the boulder. You know, just. Uh, I'm actually looking forward to these fucking sequels, man. But this movie, it's got its moments. It's unlike the Mila Jovovich Resident Evil movie directed by Paul W.S. Anderson back in the day. It, this movie is true to the material. It's not inspired by the material. It's adapting the material. So, yeah, there's a lot of moments like um, in the beginning with the truck, in the beginning of the game with the truck driver. You know, eating his sandwich. And he, no, it's not a burger. He's really digging into that burger. And they replicate that in this movie. This is a mo- <laughs> Yes, man. This is the second time a guy who's been so focused on a fucking burger causes a car accident, <laughs> causes some kind of accident. Yes. First it was Zack Snyder's Justice League. Now it's, you know, this. Spo- That's not a spoiler. That was practically in the trailer, man. Damn, we really get a nice shot of them sesame seeds. You know, just <laughs> also, um, but yeah, cool. Uh, Avin Jogia as uh, Leon S. Kennedy. Initially, I was like, wait, what? But Leon is white, and he's got, yeah, well, you know what? It doesn't matter if Leon's white. Leon, does he have the fringe? You know, like that. That Peter Parker in Spider-Man 3 fringe. Does he have that? If he's got like the that comb over or the hair swept to the side, I'm good, man. I'm good. Because I know dude's a good actor. And, you know, he'll do 
he'll do justice to the role. He'll play the part right, but I want him to look the part, man. And this is, we see him, and his head is swept to the side a little bit. So, okay, okay. That's enough for me, man. Jill Valentine, I don't know who's this, outside of Robbie or Mel, Evan Jogia, and uh, the Chief. I don't know anybody in this fucking cast, so you'll excuse me, you know. So, yeah, um, Jill Valentine was well cast. Uh, Robbie Amell is Chris Redfield. When I looked at him, I didn't see Chris Redfield. I sort of just saw Robbie Amell, you know. I mean, he, not to say he's a bad actor, it's just that. <laughs> And I haven't seen a Robbie Amell role where I've looked at him and at his character that he's played and say, like, he is this character, you know? Like, it's it's just always felt like, oh, there's Robbie Amell in this situation. It's like an anti-Christopher Walken thing, because Christopher Walken, it's like, when he acts out in a movie, it's like, how would he act if he was this character, you know? How would Christopher, would like... What if Christopher Walken was a drug dealer or, uh, what's this, a headless horseman or some shit, you know? He doesn't become the character. It's like, you know, he's that guy, you know? Well, how would I react if I was in this situation? That's his acting style. But you don't see Christopher Walken when you see this character. That's, it's like, but so with Robbie Amell in this film, it's like, it's almost like he's saying... He's playing Chris Redfield to the, he's playing Chris Redfield to the best of his ability, but looking at it, it's like, oh, there's Robbie Amell playing Chris Redfield, you know, just yeah, the guy playing the Wesker, not that Wesker, the Wesker from the first game, the turncoat Wesker that we all saw coming. If if you're a fan of video games. I'm going to tell you this right now. This movie is an adaptation of the video games. If you're a fan of these video games and you know what happens, nothing in this movie is going to surprise you. Let me just say that, all right? It's not a bad thing. When an adaptation comes by and you've read the book, of course you know what's going to happen. So, yeah. So, this movie doesn't do anything new. It adapts to the story, you know, and does a good job of it. Certainly a better... It's... I'm not gonna lie, I enjoyed the Resident Evil. The first Resident Evil with Miljovic better than I enjoyed Welcome to Raccoon City. Um yeah, it's just, you know, I like Mil jo- Miljovic. Her movies no, she's one of those actors where you're like you see her name in a marquee and you'll you like, I'm checking that out, you know. Her, Charlie Theron, Jennifer Lawrence Jessica Chastain, you know, you see them in the, they're the actors, you're, actresses where you're like, you see them in the marquee, you're like, oh, this movie's got to be good. Let me check this shit out, you know. So, yeah, I haven't said much about this film, but uh, yeah, the action in this film was, it got great towards the end, man. With the, it really good, man. It's, it gets better towards the end. And this movie starts off really... My, one of my major grabs of this film is that it starts off really slow. It takes a while to get going. And then when it gets towards the end, it's like it's trying really quickly to wrap itself up. Like, yo, we only got like five minutes of runtime left. Let's go, let's go, keep it moving. Like just Everything gets moving so fast, you know, like they don't stop to explain much. It's like, go, 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 go. Let's just keep the story going, you know, no, no, next scene, next scene. It's just, you know, like the story was trying to wrap itself up, like get to the finish line as quick as possible after like a slow jog in the beginning. But yeah, um, this movie, also the zombies, if you can call them zombies, they're, it's just really the question about this, this Resident Evil series, if they're infected, it's like they were infected with a virus that water was poisoned or whatever. Are they zombies or are they just mutated people? Because in the radio series, there are zombies. There are people who were dead who come back. But like, you know, those are zombies. But what about the people who just like drank infected water or something? You know, like, are they zombies or are they just the infected people? Yeah, anyway. I'm going to delve more into that. You know, the zombies were kind of a letdown. Let me just say that. But it gets good. We get that classic Resi shit towards the end, man. I'm going to get I'm more into that. But, yeah. So, this movie, 
out of 10, I would give it 6 out of 10 Joe Sandwiches. You know, that's just my take on this movie. Resident Evil Welcome to City, I would give it 6 out of 10 Joe Sandwiches. So, yeah, that was the non-spoiler take, as much as I can give it. And, well, oh, yeah, here comes the spoiler take of Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City. Hang in there, y'all. You don't want to hear spoilers for this movie. You want to go out and see it for yourself. I mean, you can do that. It's watchable. It's one of those movies where you're like, I like that, but I have no desire to see it again. You know, just personally, it's, that's my review on this movie. That's my non-spoiler review. Six out of ten Joe Sandwiches. Here comes the spoiler review. Oh, right, right. Okay, we're good, we're good. She was worried I was going to have to yell or something for the sound to pick up. What I am? Shit, man, this ain't fucking Ellen. I'm not going to yell these. Oh, shit. Yeah, sorry. Ignore that. Um, Spoiler review for the <laughs> Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City. No, no, back up, back up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, ah, right out of the gate, man. I'm going to start at the beginning and work my way to the end. Okay, Joe Valentine gets a ride from the shady mother... Not a shady motherfucker, but like a trucker, you know, guy carrying a load, just driving, trucking on. Keep on trucking. I think that's the song. Anyway. So he's just trucking, and he's got a dog with him. He's just sitting there, you know, digging into this burger. Oh, like in the video game, it opens on the dude driving through town, chowing on a burger. But whatever. So he, he, a lot of these people are pretty accurate to the blah, 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 the video game. Well, I said, blah, blah, but yeah. So, and I remember in the behind the scenes, they were like, there's all this stuff that's, you know, reminiscent of the video game, like the green and blue herbs and whatnot laid like all over the place. You know, this was. I think with this director, it was very much a case of let's recreate the environment as best as we can. <clears throat> so the actors, you know, they feel like they're in that space. And the zombies, I will applaud this production for something. It's that the zombies are actually there. And they're people with like heavy prosthetics and makeup and, you know, all that stuff. As opposed to just having CGI people. Or just a regular dude and with like CGI stuff on his face and like oh we'll we'll, we'll we'll add it later you know it's not nah, nah, that's that's not gonna work. What I do not face is the dog. This scene, this thing where a dog goes after this guy, this chief. Uh, he's played by the actor's name escapes me, but he was on Gotham. He was Bullock on Gotham, and he was in the. TV show Third Rock from the Sun. I remember him talking about um, what a wow wow paddle was. Is <laughs> having to explain like he spent money on this thing. Like his girl asked him, "What does it do?" She's like, "It makes the guitar go, when you step on it, it makes the guitar go wow wow." I was like, "Say that again, wow wow." <laughs> uh, it's like a thing people do. Like they want you to know how ridiculous this shit sounds, so they ask you to explain yourself, and then they make you say it again. And he's like, okay, one more time. And then in your head, you're like, oh, I can see what you're doing. This actually seems kind of kind of silly. You know, it sounded so good in my head. But now that I say it out loud, it sounds kind of, uh, yeah, ridiculous that I spent all this money on a wah-wah paddle. But yeah, that guy, he's the chief. And he's actually kind of funny in this movie. There's a scene where he's talking to the Wesker. I can't remember his name. But he's a Wesker, so we just know he's a bad guy. He's got the orange, you know, vest on. So he's, like, sitting there on the phone. It's good that this movie was set in the 90s. The late 90s or 2000s, somewhere there. I can't remember the specifics, but, yeah, it was somewhere around there. So he's on his phone, and, you know, this the chief was like, oh, I'm sorry. Like, are we keeping you from something? Like, he was like, no, no, just this girl, you know, keep messaging me. And the chief was like, you know, maybe we should take her out on a date. You know, do this and that and this and that. Hey, you might even get laid. Does that sound good to you? The guy's like, yeah, that, that actually sounds great, chief. He's like, well, too bad, because it's not going to happen. It's, you know, like, you're on duty tonight, motherfucker. <laughs> I'm looking at this dude. I kind of feel bad for him, because... He's, the way he's like, 
yeah he's like yeah that actually sounds good he's buying this shit i'm like dude are you falling for this shit he's just setting you up so he can punk you man you really think he's just gonna let you walk out of here and go on your date fuck no you're at work put the phone down what happens is they warn him you see like they certain people in this town okay this town was, was essentially a testing grounds for umbrella you know the umbrella was poisoning people was uh poisoning the water with the virus and like seeing how it affected people certain people didn't get infected like chris redfield joe valentine the chief wesker because well, obviously and um just some claire. claire redfield yeah claire redfield is in this movie claire redfield joe valentine. yeah they're all in this motherfucker but yeah <clears throat> the scene in this movie that harkens back to that infamous moment in Resi 1 where it's like, You are almost a chill sandwich. <laughs> she takes a sandwich from the dude at the time and is like, Chill sandwich. <laughs> she, they were like this scene with, um, where Leon is like sleeping and they push, a dude puts a bottle and he's like, I bet she can't knock that bottle, get that bottle off his head from way over here. It's like, you're on. And so, as opposed to chucking something at the bottle, she chucks it at the dude. It hits him, and he wakes up, knocking the bottle, and it's like, ah, I win, sucker. Kick, like, dude, how you, how you let that shit happen? You should have been more specific. You just said you had to knock the thing off his head. You didn't have to say, I would just make it fall. There are some smart asses out there in the world. Yeah, like, um... My one teacher would tell us a story about how... Oh, yeah, he was trying to tell us, like... Some people try to figure out weird situations. Like, the interesting ways you can get around problems. He gave, he gave people a cylinder and a piece of paper. And he's like, find some way to get that piece of paper off the desk without touching it. You know? Use a cylinder or whatever, but you can't touch it with your bare hands. You gotta find some way of getting that cylinder off... No, no, this piece of paper off the table without using some. So, uh, he came up with the, he's, he's like, you can put the tube around your mouth, create suction, and like lift it off the paper. And then it's like, some smart ass did this. He asked his friend to come up. And he's like, can you lift the paper for me? And he like lifted it above his head and he's like, there, done. Like, what? <laughs> That's, that's why I'm like, hey, you gotta be specific, man. You, you, yeah, you said I can't touch it, but you didn't say I couldn't ask someone to come over and pick it up for me. I mean, shit. <sighs> oh, man, the smart-assness of some people in this motherfucking planet. Hey, 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 And it's like, okay, no. Mm -mm. So, yeah, Claire arrives in on a truck. Is that the fact that all these characters converge on this one night, it's like, it's coincidental, but it's like almost too coincidental, like, tonight, they all happen to converge in this one town on the day Umbrella decides, hey, we gotta, like, nuke the fucking place, just, ugh, dude, but yeah, okay, I get it, it happens, shit like this happens, people just happen to run into each other, it does happen, but, um, oh yeah, Jill Valentine on the truck, they hit someone, and uh, that person is just laying in the fucking street. Uh, <laughs> it's so fucking weird, man. Like, so the trucker hits somebody. He's like, "Oh, it's not my fault." You know, you saw him, and like, I think it was like, "Yeah, he, like, he didn't cause this." And Joe was like, "Help me pick them up, you know? Help me get them." He's like, "What the fuck are you talking about? Are you crazy?" And it's like, you know, they they might still be alive or something. I'm still I hate breakfast to you, but they got hit by a fucking truck. A big Mac truck, man. An 18 wheeler just hit them. They ain't getting up from that shit. They're dead. There is blood and everything. Speaking of the oh yeah, the thing get and then the It's clear that this is a zombie because it gets up and runs off. Not only that, but the dog that the dude was taking with him licks up the blood what the fuck <sighs> i don't know if i as you can put that shit the shit about um you know statistically speaking a, a dog's mouth is cleaner than a human's you can just kiss my ass with that shit man
Uh, you kissing my ass. Your mouth is probably cleaner than a fucking human's after that. Dogs, dogs eat the nastiest shit, man. It eats shit off the fucking ground. This dog licked up blood, man. I've, I've seen dogs eat dead bodies, man. This, this is nasty. A dog's mouth is not cleaner than a human's. Dogs don't brush. They don't floss. They don't goggle. They don't do shit that we do. Our mouths are way cleaner than theirs, dude. It's fucking bullshit that you say a dog's mouth is cleaner than humans. Not to mention they try to lick their own ass. No, wait, they try to bite their own ass. I think it's a cat that licks its own ass. Also disgusting. I'm getting off topic, but yeah. Anyway. Shit. <clears throat> Moving on. Disgusting dog. You know, Jill gets a ride into town. The dog slowly starts to turn. It bites the owner. And then it just sits, you know, like, and it's like, ah, fucking dog. Like, I don't know if he says that, but it's like, yeah. So he gets bit by the dog. And then he just goes about trucking. You know, Jill winds up at her brother's place. Clara, uh, well, no, 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 not Jill. It's Claire. Fuck, I'm getting too confused. It's Claire. Claire winds up at her brother's place. And um, she sneaks in, you know, and they get into an argument. It takes her forever to tell them, like, hey, something's wrong with this town. And it, right away, he's like, "What? Like, why are you back here? Is it money? You know, like that, that is that what this is about? You know, like just you know, that typical the person who just left abruptly and you just assume that the only reason they came back is because they need something. You know, like yeah, there are those people out there in your life who only enter your life when they want something from you. It's Yeah. But that isn't the case. She didn't come here because she wants something from you. She came here because like, you know, um something is wrong with um with this town, you know, like umbrella is up to something. And I got this video from this squirrely looking dude with his beard and like, <laughs> I don't know, this conspiracy guy. And he's, t- some, he's like saying some shit, like umbrellas up something, they're poisoning the water. And that's why people are sick. So I was like, and you know, Chris is like, I don't have time for this crap. And he leaves, you know, goes to stars. And he's like, you know, umbrella saved us. You know? Oh, I forgot to mention, there's this subplot about um Claire being in, uh, being raised in this orphanage with a bunch of other air orphanage in a raccoon city with a bunch of other kids. An orphanage, uh, an orphanage owned by Umbrella, mind you. Uh, like, there's a scene where, like, Claire wakes up and she's like, I saw something. Like, there's another kid here. And it's like, I think that other kid is supposed to be Leon, the kid that she talks to. I don't know. And, like, and she's like, I saw something. And it's like, you didn't see anything, you know, like, you, it was just a dream. I'm like, oh, maybe it was Chris, like, I don't know. But it's like, how the fuck do you know it was just a dream? You were sleeping. She literally had to wake you up and say, I saw something. How do you know, like, you were just dreaming? I'm like, what, what the fuck? Just because there's nothing there. That's why there's nothing there, which is why she said, I saw something, not I see something. Whatever there's gone now. Like, what the fuck? No kid would just be like, you probably just imagine that. Does she have a habit of imagining things? But if she does, you haven't established that. Please, dude. Your dude acts like this is the f- this is like the fifth time this week he's been woken up. Like I saw something. I saw something. All right, let's check it out. And turns out there's nothing there. No. So it's like she saw something. And um, Birkin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The kid that um, you know, they talk about is Birkin. I. No, she's not his daughter. Birkins, William Birkins in this movie. And once I found that out, I'm like, oh. Like, because uh, I first heard the name uh, in a God of War video when Ares was like, you have no idea what a true monster is. And dude was like, um, talking about, I was expect, you know, when it was an everything wrong with video. And the guy's like, you know, when I heard that line, I was expecting more of a William Birkin type transformation and not this reject from Altered Beast. So I looked up William Birkin, and Birkin is the guy from Resident Evil. Jacks himself with a serum, with, you know, one of the viruses, and he transforms into this motherfucker with a huge eye in his shoulder. Like, ew. I mean, I don't know if that's an eye or a pus pocket or something, but, like, it's a pretty obvious sign of shoot here. You know, it's helpful in the game when, uh, 
you know, I think that Adventure Time made fun of this shit. They were like, um, this this, this moment where, where Finn and Jake are cornered by this monster, and like Finn is like, ah, I can't find his magic gem weak spot, and the monster turns around and there's a huge like gem on his back, and it's like, ah, there it is. You know, like, that's kind of the Resi games back in the day. The weak spot had to be painfully obvious. Like, oh, you see that? Big red throbbing part on his arm. Shoot there. Let try shooting there. You know, maybe that'll work. <laughs> but like, hey, I mean, the CG, CG in this film. So yeah, yeah, Berkey and his one making all the experiments. He's trying to get his family out of town. You know, the roads are all blocked off. Chief tries to get out of town. Roads are all blocked off. Leaves Leon in charge. For like a hot minute before he has to scramble all the way back and he's like all right we're back in i'm back you know like let's just get the fuck out of here explains like you know the um you know they was we we were all warned ahead of time like they tried to warn they told us like you know now we can evacuate like the, oh now we gotta evacuate because there's a strike coming down to destroy the town all the roads are blocked so yeah we gotta get the fuck out of here there's another way out like through the through the orphanage so yeah, there's that story. Um, Leon is kind of a goof in the beginning. It's like, I, I mean, he's the rookie. I get it. He's the rookie. He doesn't know everything. But like, damn, man. Like, this ain't the Leon I'm used to, man. This ain't the guy from Mersey 4. This ain't the dude who saved the president's daughter. This ain't... Fuck, this guy is really the rookie. Holy shit. <laughs> like, okay, I get it. You know, movies got, comedy's got to come from somewhere, but... Did it have to be Leon? Seriously? Damn. <clears throat> yeah. We so at the the star crew goes to the stars team goes to the mansion. Um they get attacked. And there's a scene in the trailer where they see a guy humping hunched over a body, he's like gnawing, gnawing at something. And it's like that classic horror movie scene. It happens in Doom. I think it happens in the first Resident Evil. It's like whenever the zombie with the characters are trying to slowly rounding a corner, they see somebody like, uh, like crouched down, gnawing at something. They're like, "Are you okay, sir?" or whatever. They shine the flashlights on him, and he turns his head, mouth all covered in blood, and it's like, "Ah!" And they have to cap this guy. It's like, uh, this happens a lot in horror movies, man. Um, specifically zombie horror movies shit anyway well the characters don't know that it's a zombie so they don't know what to do and it's happens in horror movies too they riddle this motherfucker with bullets before they go aim for the head you know like uh you know whatever anyway um another thing with the zombies they're so fucking ridiculous in the beginning because this that's why I was like, are they zombies or are they just infected people? Because there's a scene where, where Claire is like looking out of the window and she sees this little kid and this mom, and uh, you know they're infected. All the hairs falling out and shit. And there's a scene earlier where um, where Leon is at a diner and he sees this woman and blood starts coming out of her eyes, and she's like, oh, it's it's nothing. I'm like. If I'm in some rando, I'm thinking if I'm in some rando diner, like, and I'm getting served by somebody who randomly starts bleeding out of their eyes and, like, nose or what the fuck ever, and whose eyes looked bloodshot beforehand, I'm like, ah, I'm fucking out of here. I'm not touching this food. I don't know where you've been. Like, I'm piecing the fuck out of this cuckoo party. Shit. But, yeah, you know, no real alarm bells seem to go off just yet. Oh yeah, that was an other scene. But like, yeah, she sees the mom and the kid, and the mom is like, uh, is like uh, on the other side of that glass, you know, seemingly salivating at the sight of Jill Valentine. Uh, no, Jill fucking. I keep confusing the two with Claire. Like, it's like, uh, I want me some Claire Redfield. Like, oh uh, yeah, look at that sexy ass jacket she got on, and them jeans. Can't wait to tear through those. Yeah, fuck yeah. <laughs> This just got weird. This is some army hammer shit. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was a fucked up reference that is gonna date this so hard. Oh shit. But uh <clears throat> moving on. This scene of re- 
ridiculousness that follows, because the, fir- the first time Claire gets attacked, like, at the door, someone's at the door, and in blood, I'm assuming their own blood, because there's no body anywhere, they wrote Ichi Tasty on the door, and it's like, stand there, like, what the, you're a zombie, what, what are you doing, why are you writing Ichi Tasty, since when do zombies try to build suspense? They're a zombie. They normally just attack you, man. They don't stand there drawing in their own blood, itchy, tasty. You know, like, because they're itchy. You know, they think you're tasty or something. Like, what, 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 so what does that mean? Itchy, tasty. What the fuck is that? Man, that's never explained. The infected people just, you know, get all itchy and shit. Like, what? Ugh. Uh, I mean, it's just like, I've got an itch that I scratch. Yeah, that's not going to go away until I get into some clear red field. You know, like, <laughs> I can smell that pussy all the way from across the... I'm sorry. This is fucked up. <laughs> oh. I'm having more fun talking about this fucking movie than I did watching it. Holy shit. I'm not, that's a lie. The movie's third act was fun, you know, because it felt like a proper Rizzy game, man. You had a souped up, you know, boss fight. You had Leon with the rocket launcher, you know, you had the train. It was cool. It was like a proper, I'm like, yes, this is what the, this is the shit we should have been doing the whole movie, man. Why was the rest of the film like this? That's where the six comes in, man. That's why I'm like, you know what? This movie is a six out of ten. Because that ending was superb. The beginning was like, what the fuck is this? Why is it taking so long? Why is it raining really hard in some parts of town, but like raining a normal amount in others? And then raining really hard when it pans back, and then raining like a little barely. You know? <clears throat> There's a scene with the truck driver. Who's slowly turning. When I say slowly turning, I mean really slowly turning. Because a lot happens between him getting bit and like him starting to turn. Also, his dog is right there. His dog is slowly turning. And all it was bite him once and then just sit there in the passenger seat, you know. Didn't attack him full on Cujo style. Just sat there as he, as he drove his truck into the police station fence. Blowing himself up, but somehow climbs out of there and walks through the front door. It's just so he can be shot and then lay there in a smoldering heap. I mean, fucking Claire makes it to the police station, you know, teams up with Leon. They find the squirrely guy and he tries to get the fuck. Weirdly enough, squirrely guy is locked in a cell. Because of course he is, man. The guy with shit to say about like. Raccoon City has somehow got himself locked up in this jail. In this jail that the two, one of the two main, that both the main characters just happen to be in. Of course he is, because, you know, the story needs to move ahead and we can't really worry about all the minutia of how the fuck did this guy get here, why is he here and all that. He's just here, move on. Yeah, so he drops from exposition, convinces Leon to open, from forces Leon to open the door by taking his gun from him. You know, he's like, back up or I'll shoot you, you know, I'll shoot you, you know, back up. Thing is, he's locked in there with a guy who is slowly turning. How the... Uh, just, you know, he gets bit after dropping his main position. They cap the guy. It takes Leon way too long. He's, he dude is like, freeze, you know, stop moving. This dude just ate somebody. I think we're beyond freeze. Just shoot him. <clears throat> Fucking Claire is a bigger badass than Leon. Leon's a cop. For fuck's sakes. He's been trained to like handle weaponry. And Claire just picks up a gun and BAM! Caps this fool. Like, okay, I get it. I get it. You know, Claire just, you know, shoot. She, she shoots a lot of motherfuckers in games and shit. So, Joe gets betrayed by Wesker at the mansion. He was like, you know, I knew. I knew all along. I knew the shit was coming. You know, here's, this is the way out. I'm taking it. You know, the helicopter just crashed into the house. And, you know, he's found the secret crash. He's like, this is the way out. I'm taking it. You know, you can come with me. You know, I want you to come with me. But, like, I ain't going to force you. She's like, we we can't just leave the friend our friends here. It's like, I'm, I'm going, man. I'm doing my thing. 
you know, I'm piecing the fuck out of here. Like, bye, Felicia. Just rolls out. <laughs> Man, if Cinema Sins gets a... When Cinema Sins finally does the stage video for this, I, they need to do a bye, Felicia moment right there, man. I should... Oh, uh, shit. Like, bye, Felicia. Pieces through the song. <clears throat> and he runs into... He, later on, he runs into uh, Birkin and his family, you know, his wife and his daughter. I think his wife gets gunned down and his daughter ends up getting away with a sample of the virus. But not before Birkin injects himself. And, you know, the dude ends up getting shot. The Wesker guy. <clears throat> uh, you know, he's like, I didn't want... And towards the end, like, Eddie's dying. He's like, you know, we want this. It wasn't supposed to be like this. You know, I didn't, I didn't want to hurt anybody. Like, what the... Whatever, dude. I hate when villains get redemption arcs now. You know, fucking Kylo Ren got a redemption arc. Why? You are not Vader. Two movies have gone to great lengths to show you are not fucking Vader. Like, fucking Snoke was like, take that shit off. <laughs> this, dude, we're a dude in a Vader costume. That's, uh, but yeah, he got the Vader redemption story, which essentially made Rise of Skywalker just, you know, Return of the Jedi remake. Kind of like how Force Awakens was essentially a remake of A New Hope. Look at the movies, one after the other, and you'll see some similarities, man. Kind of like how Alien... No, no, wait. Prometheus? Kind of like Prometheus was a lot like... It was such a remake of the first Alien movie. You know, you got an android that, you know, turns on him. You got, it's got a few more bells and whistles. You know, Prometheus has a few more bells and whistles than Alien. But, ah! But you know, it's it's a solid it's a solid movie on its ah, I hate that Prometheus wasn't just its own movie. You know? It could have been its own awesome groundbreaking sci-fi, but it just had to turn it into an aliens prequel. You just had to do it, couldn't you? Couldn't leave well enough. You just couldn't leave well enough alone. Oh well. When we live <laughs> I love that song, like "Well Enough Alone" by "Well Enough Alone" by Chevelle, and then Paul's like, "When we live." Oh shit! They got some. What happened to those motherfuckers? There's a ton of bands and shit where you're like, "What happened to these people? Did they just stop making music? What the fuck? One minute they were everywhere, and the next, fa boom, poof, they're gone." Moving back on, uh, uh, Birkin comes back. Later on in the film, when um, Jill and, and, and Claire and Chris and Leon are on the train with the little girl trying to escape. And he comes back and he's like all mutated and shit. His face is like, <laughs> I wonder if his one arm is like huge. It's got the big eye, you know, like it's like in the video games, the graphics in this movie, the CGI in this movie and the graphics in the remake match up and that's a good thing it would be seriously bad if it matched up with the graphics from the first video I'm like ah the fuck is this it definitely didn't give me scorpion king vibes you know like there was this like i was glad to see birkin all mutated up i'm like yes finally we can get to some resident evil this is what resident it's, it's like yeah baby this is what i've been waiting for this is what it's all about yeah boss fights bazookas and the main hero blowing the fuck out of the, you know, guy with the bazooka, you know, blasting him right in his fucking weak spot. This is what we came to see. Not zombies riding itchy fucking tasty on the door and then launching surprise attacks from behind and shit. You know, like, dude, some bullshit, man. And also, I forgot to mention, but they just hang around. The zombies at the police station, they just... They're trying to get it in by essentially pressing themselves against the shut gates. You know, they're not trying to climb over. They're not trying to pull it down. They're just like, ah, ah. They're just like what the fuck is going on? Ah. You know, it's like, come the fuck on, man. It's raining out here. We cold. <laughs> this is, oh, shit, man. What the? 
these zombies also the zombies are fucking non-threats if you're a main character let me say if you're a if you're a, a getaway pilot or a non or a non-essential person they swarm you like Rawr! and they get you like that insta kill but if you're leon or chris or okay if you're leon there's a chance that they might get you <laughs> they almost get him a few times but if you're chris they, they dude he is literally just keeping them there's a scene where he's literally keeping them at bay there are three of them trying to jump him and he's keeping them away by just shoving them he's just swatting them away he's literally just pushing his way through a bunch of zombies like what the fuck he's strong but goddamn man he, i'm i'm surprised they didn't fucking go bury bombs on these motherfuckers grab a bat and it's like blah blah oh that's negan I'm sorry about that. Wrong reference, man. <clears throat> Let me try again. I'm surprised they didn't go Rocky Balboa on these motherfuckers and start swinging, you know. Bow, bow. He's like, yo, clear. Bow. I'm like, I did, I'm doing it. Like, bow. <laughs> Fuck that shit. If you're a main character, these zombies are a non-threat. And they come slowly at you, too. But if you're just around with nobody, then suddenly they bum rushing you. Hey, what the fuck? They've eaten the magic mushrooms and they got all the juice, man. They got the sonic rings up their ass or something. Shit. Yeah. But you know. Um, that's I guess that's all I got to say, you know. Characters ride off in the sunset at the end. Wesker gets his comeuppance. Birkin gets blown to smithereens. Um, train sequence at the end was really cool. I like that. Action paced. You, get, you know where everyone is doesn't cut too quickly, um, you know, and it's believable. I mean, they make it just in time to escape the city before the bombs get dropped. Also, what is it with, you know, um, governments and movies, and they're like, oh, there's, a, there's some kind of infestation that's threatening to spread throughout the whole country. Nuke the town! Is that just the go-to answer for everything? The Chitauri are invading, and you know, the... The threatening to take over New York City. Nuke New York. You know. Fucking God, there's baby Godzilla's in Madison Square Garden. Blow up Madison Square Garden. Ugh. What is with these people? They go to a planet like that. There's a zombie infestation in Las Vegas. Nuke Las Vegas on the 4th of July. It's going to be patriotic, man. And kind of cool if you think about it. <laughs> And they realize, oh, Ashley, that's kind of fucked up. Okay, let's move it back one more day. Make it July 3rd, all right? Yeah. Oh, oh boy. But all that aside, all that aside, um, yeah. Resident Evil, welcome to Wacoon. Welcome to Wacoon, yay. Yeah, welcome to Wacoon City, uh, home of the... Umbrella Corporation's Waskly Wabbits. Just, nah, fuck that. This movie would have been slightly more entertaining if Elmer Fudd was in here. He'd definitely go for the head. He'd miss a couple times, but like, yeah, you know. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. Resident Evil, welcome to Raccoon City. See, I got it right. Was definitely a 6 out of 10 Jill Sandwich movie. Yeah, a lot of the nice little references they had in there. It was good. It was faithful to the source material. Um, aside from the beginning, there weren't many moments where I was like, okay, now I'm bored. So that's a good sign. Characters were pretty well done, man. Everybody had something, you know. There was never a point where I, there was a character who was like, fuck, dude, I could play this dude, or... This character, did I feel like characters were miscast? No. Characters were exceptionally cast. You know, some didn't always look the part. Like, for example, Claire in the scene where she gets to the police station has her hair tied up in a ponytail. And, like, apparently the reason the actress did that is because, like, when it rains and you have your hair tied up in a ponytail, you look, you look terrible. It's in, in the video game. So, like, that's why she has her hair undone. For like the whole movie. It's like, okay, okay. I can see that. I can see the, the practical reasoning behind that. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway. Uh, 
Well, I guess that's that, you know. This has been the spoiler review of uh, the Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City. Six out of ten jewel sandwiches, as always, people. Like, oh, shit, I forgot something. Because even the movie forgot about this shit after it happened. There was a sub, the supply with the orphanage job. There was a liquor there. You know that thing with the brain for head, no eyes, but it's got this, it, like, it can sniff you out, and it's got this really long tongue? Yeah, that just appears out of nowhere, you know, without really explanation, you know. I mean, I, I guess in the first movie, it sort of just appeared. But like, yeah, at least they could explain why it just appeared. They made it there, but, like, anyway, the kid that Clara claimed to see in the orphanage is real, and she's just, you know, she saves them from the liquor, and, you know, gets them to the elevator, and then it's like, bye-bye. And that's it. That's that. That's fucking it, man. That that's the last we see of that character. I'm assuming she died in an explosion that came afterwards. So, okay, she had this like creepy mask on. That was a face, but it had like a slit on the side that her actual like face could look out through. It was creepy. She looked like she had two faces and shit. I'm like yeah. Um, no, Mister X. I mean. It was weird. Like, Resident Evil 2 had Mr. X. You know, like, Resident Evil 3 was lauded so, was liked so much because it had the Nemesis guy. Thing is, in the original game, Nemesis was so good because Capcom was was able to do all they wanted to with Mr. X because in the second one, they had Mr. X, but he wasn't finished. It was all right, but he wasn't finished. But with 3, with Nemesis, it was, oh, we got, this is what Mr. X would have been if he was all finished, you know, like, Boom! Busting in the walls and shit like the Kool Aid Man. Only he's not Kool Aid Man. He's fucking Dokes from Dexter. And he's like, boom! Surprise, motherfucker! Like, oh shit. It's Nemesis was the fucking Kool Aid Man. It's like, oh yeah! <laughs> oh shit. There have been so many fucking mods. Have you seen that shit? The Resident Evil games with so many weird ass mods. Like, it's like, plow! Income Shrek, you know, just like, or like, blam, it's Thomas the Tank Engine. Or, Can we get an actual Kool Aid man? You're like, blam, oh yeah, ah, here comes Kool Aid, here comes Kool Aid, gonna save the day. And you have to blow his fucking head off. That would be so nice, man. It was so weird. <sighs> <clears throat> yeah, that's the end of this review, people. Uh, you remember, you can't have. Uh, as always, keep your pants dry, your dreams wet, and remember, you can't have dill bread without dill dough.